to Patrick Reynolds, founder of the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America. He's the grandson of R.J. Reynolds, a tobacco company founder, and he lost his father and brother to smoking-related diseases. I began by asking him why it has taken the United States so long to adopt a more aggressive campaign to discourage smoking. The truth is, we had a very difficult time under the Bush administration. Uh, the Republican Conservative Party got a great deal of money from the tobacco industry. Very little goes to the Democrats. So within two weeks of taking power, President Obama and the Democratic Congress, the liberals, signed into law a 61-cent federal cigarette tax hike on tobacco products. And they also, by June, passed FDA regulation of tobacco, which has led to the present warning labels on tobacco products. Under Obama, we've seen tremendous progress against uh, big tobacco and bringing them to heel. Under the Bush administration, uh, really nothing happened. So now we see uh, the adoption of this visual campaign, a pretty aggressive campaign. Question is, do campaigns like this work? The Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, the FDA in Washington, uh, did an 18,000-person study of uh, people of all ages to see which of the ads would be most effective, which ones would work. There is solid scientific evidence showing that these graphic warnings showing pictures of diseased lungs really are effective at discouraging children from starting to smoke. Uh, and if you can stop a teenager from smoking, they probably will not be a smoker as an adult. Nine out of 10 people who smoke get addicted before they were 19. After 19, almost no one starts smoking. And they also provide a strong incentive for people who do smoke to quit and perhaps best of all, give them a toll-free number for live, over-the-telephone, free counseling for how to quit smoking, right in all the ads. What have been uh, the results of these kinds of campaigns in other countries? You know, we mentioned the examples of Brazil and of Canada, uh, but around the world, uh, have we seen people stop smoking because of campaigns like these? Forty-three other nations have already adopted this policy of strong graphic warning labels, and uh, they are getting results. We've seen declines uh, in smoking rates among youth and among adults in nations that have adopted these policies. The United Nations World Health Organization's Global Treaty on Tobacco also calls for nations to spend money to get ads on television as well, to raise their tobacco tax, which makes it less attractive to kids and to adults, and to uh, spend money on providing cessation for people who'd like to quit smoking. And when countries adopt and have a strong smoking law as well, uh, to ban candy-flavored cigarettes, which appeal to children, uh, but the smoking law, getting rid of smoking in Internet cafes, wonderful, just wonderful measures that, taken together, really do reduce smoking rates among youth and among adults. Moving now to a story out of New York City and a case that's caused huge political embarrassment for the mayor, Michael Bloomberg. A government plan for a payroll system that was supposed to reduce fraud has resulted in what prosecutors have called a massive and elaborate scheme. Hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars have been stolen. Kristen Salumi reports.